There's something you don't see every day. Almost every, every day. So, I have no idea or I have no information or origin of Call Me Kerson. But by the looks of it, he does look like a cool YouTuber. Like, I have no information about him whatsoever. I don't even know who he is or anything. But my friend told me to make a reaction to what happened to him and might do a video of what happened to him three days ago. Yeah, and... By the looks of it, everyone was wondering and saying what's going on, everything. Even Penguin Zero is talking about it as well. So, we're going to react to what happened to him, and then from there, we'll talk about it. I got the reaction recorder prepared. We're going to react to this and see what we're up against. Other than that, give me a little second. Alright, so, without no further ado delay, here goes nothing. All right, let's do this. Call me Carson admits to it. Now call me Carson. You look like a huge rising star beloved by all. Mm. And this is one of these rare cases on YouTube where the 180 is insane. It's just this power dynamic where you can do this with your fans because yeah. you're not a normal person, right? Like they're, Are it's just, their parents? You do this. Also, when are, do you turn 18? If you find yourself asking a girl, when do you turn 18? You're, you're, up. Yeah. So or if yeah. you just told Double her right that you can't wait to jack off and think about her, and she's like, "Sorry, I was, I was cool." Yeah. yeah. Like, like, or or I read it else. like curious. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. The brown guy who owns the Jacksonville Jaguars here. Today, I'm going to be talking about Call Me Carson. He is Call a YouTuber Carson. and Twitch streamer who rose to fame by playing Minecraft. In addition, he made many comedic videos with other creators, which often racked up tens of millions of views. However, two girls came forward in early 2021 and revealed Carson sexted them when they were 17. As a result, Carson disappeared from the internet for nearly a year but recently returned. This is what happened to Call Me Carson. Before I get into the video, I just want to thank today's sponsor, Ibble. Ibble is a place for creators and supporters to connect in a personal way. The app provides creators a place to have real conversations with their community about topics they are passionate about. By using it, I can chat with you guys through video or audio and answer any questions. Personally, I love the app because it has an easy-to-use interface and it's focused on interaction. Oh, and there's tons of people on there hosting events which are easy to find. In addition, it will let you openly discuss anything you want without getting censored. Speaking of which, on December 24th at 9 p.m., I'm going to be hosting an event on Ibble where I will be talking about the Call Me Carson situation, so make sure to watch the video right. and come by. Ask me questions you want, and I'll be answering them, so please go to the app to post them. Just look up my username, Internet at J on Ibble, and you will find the event easily. I, I would love to hear your thoughts about the Carson situation. It's going to be amazing, and I hope we have a good discussion because I consider you guys my friends and really want to talk to you. All you need to do is hit the lightning bolt. Click the link below to download Ibble, and let's All start right. chatting. Oh, and the event doesn't disappear, so you can continue asking questions or giving your thoughts even after it's over. Now back to the video. All Call right. Me Carson's real name is Carson King, and he created his YouTube channel on May 12, 2012. Before he uploaded well, to his main channel, was... he posted countless Minecraft videos to his previous ones, Gamercraft 157 and Icebox Carson. He loved to tell silly jokes and showcase his comedic personality. Yeah, there we go. Oh, look at all that sweat that he's playing so yeah. hard. Oh my god. <laughs> Carson? Are you okay? <laughs> no! No! Oh. <laughs> no! <laughs> in March 2019, Carson created a Minecraft server called SMP Live. Players on the server were required to stream often and subject to a hit system where donations could prank or kill them. This later proved right. to be a great idea as the interactions were hilarious and the constant collaborations allowed all of the members to grow. Carson's SMP Live became so big he was credited with helping the resurgence of Minecraft. Beyond Minecraft, Carson also uploaded many YouTube videos where viewers were able to see his unique sense of humor. For example, he invaded Discord servers and reviewed cursed TikTok. He even made a Discord spelling bee, which was quite a creative idea. Joko, your I word admit. is rat. Or I will admit, that's pretty cool. Correct. All right, cool. <laughs> Pyro, your word is Czechoslovakia. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. First strike goes to you. Quack, you should, your word I will is admit, Yugoslavia. He does look pretty cool so far. No, no doubt from there. Probably your word is air. Definition. Uh, A-I-R. King made waves across the internet when he was the main guest on an episode of The Rochler, now called Lover Host, on November 9th, 2019. 
For those of you blessed enough to not know what it is, let me ruin everything for you. It's oh, a Twitch God. dating show where multiple people compete for a popular content creator. The host, Austin, also used to call himself Raj and fake an Indian accent every episode, but thankfully stopped. But that's a story for another day. A oh. cute blonde girl named Katerino ended up winning Carson's episode. Although the show wasn't meant to be serious, the two took a liking to each other. On January 22nd, 2020, one of Carson's friends, Fitz, appeared on Lover Host. Katerino ended up winning his show as well, but chose host instead of love, meaning she wasn't interested in him. Oh, Reno chose. Oh, no. Host! She even said she was loyal to Carson. I'm loyal to my sister. Sadly, though, the statement aged worse than some common in My Little Pony Jar. It was later revealed Katerino cheated on Carson with multiple other men, including Fitz. The new shattered king who went on Twitter and stated he was taking a break. He wrote, I'm taking a break indefinitely. This has been a difficult decision, but after considering way, going to focus on making myself a better person. Thank you for your Good support. Idea. For those concerned about me, I recently started antidepressants and have been on a whirlwind of emotion and pain in my personal life. I recently started seeing a counselor oh, yeah. a few weeks ago. Right now, I'm in no way mature enough to handle the responsibility of this job. The entire community felt bad for Carson and showered him with love and support after seeing his tweets. Katerina later made an apology video saying she was confused and suffered from depersonalization. And I was very lost and confused. I'm now seeing a therapist, and although I didn't realize it at the time, I was dealing a lot with depersonalization. And I felt like I was two different people living two different lives. I felt like a passenger in my own body. She also emphasized the two were never boyfriend and girlfriend. However, her video was generally poorly received. Notably, Fitz also apologized on Twitter. Unfortunately, the sympathy everyone had for Carson disappeared faster than a plate of butter chicken in the middle of a Mumbai slum. In oh, fact, man. it would turn into disgust and disappointment. You see, on January 4, 2021, Keemstar posted a video where he interviewed two of Carson's friends and fellow members of the Lunch Club. The Lunch Club was a group of seven minecrackers that reportedly dissolved due to the COVID pandemic. However, in oh. the video, Hugbox told Keemstar the group actually broke up because Carson called him in March 2020 and revealed he sexted girls. Well, I, I'm just going to be what? stick to the facts here, which is that uh, one day in March, he called me uh, shortly before he told Travis. Uh, everybody was up in L.A. and he told most of them face to face, but he called me and I picked up the phone and he was basically like, I have to tell you something. And then he told me that he did underage girls. And I think that he said that they were fans. Jesus Christ. And that was what I was told. Did he tell you how old they were? Uh, at the I'm time, scared. no. Hugbox also mentioned Carson said he would work on himself, but never did. Yeah, at the time, he, I think he told me that he planned to, like, take a step back and, like, get himself right with everything and basically get better and, like, that he had made mistakes or whatever. And then uh, he, as far as I'm aware, he didn't really take a step back, is, is, was my understanding of it. That's why I, part of why I, I remained so quiet about it for so long is that I was genuinely hoping that he was going to just walk away for a little bit and get himself right but i don't know he didn't do that Damn. interestingly rumors had already been floating around that king behaved inappropriately with underage fans so this was the first time the issue was brought up publicly on the same day the keemstar video was posted a girl named sam claimed she was carson when she was 17. she wrote this on twitter the carson situation i can personally come out and say that i've been Carson. I have talked to many people and never came out about this since now. At the time, I was still 17 and in high school. I jokingly tweeted at Carson, be my boyfriend on my old account. He didn't reply to the tweet and went straight to my DM. I don't have old SS, but I have Discord messages. Cons. Sam then showed multiple Discord messages between her and King. When do you turn 18? I'm scared I want to talk to you for the wrong reason. Elaborate? What if I only want to talk to you for the sexual part of it? I don't want that. But like, I'm worried about it. What if subconsciously oh, I'm only talking to you because it turns me on or something? No. Is that really what you want? What other options are there? Also, what would you want to happen? IDK, all I know is every time I jack off now, I have a really hard time not thinking of you. I guess my brain got stimulated and now it wants more, you know? Sorry, it wasn't school, but yeah, I get that. We should add back on Snap. What do you think? Sounds good to me, but like I said, I don't want it to be just sexual, you know? I wouldn't mind calling and watching shit together or play something, you feel? Yeah, I feel you. Just HMU next time you're horny. I'll leave it up to you for Jesus when we do sexual Christ. stuff. The next day on January 5th, 2021, Keemstar posted a tweet from another girl who claimed Carson sexted her when he was 20 and she was 17. It said, May through June 2019 started when he shared my grad photo on Insta no. on May 22nd. This is all I had. I was 17 at the time of these exchanges and he was 20. There's more, but the IG account I had was deleted last year. I wish I said something sooner. The attached Snapchat messages read, 
Hey, you there? I want to drop the sexual stuff entirely. It's been making me feel sick thinking about it. I feel wrong for having done it and I feel like I've led you on. I enjoy talking to you and all, but it's just too much and I feel really guilty, so I'm sorry. I've also realized I have a crush on my friend Sarah and I don't want to lead you on in any way. Tomorrow I'm starting my trip to California and I think I need to just move on. I'm very stressed and talking to you has been adding extra stress and I'm very scared and I feel bad about wanting to unadd you. It's just a lot right now and I'm not sure talking to you is a good decision. Shortly after the allegations surfaced, two of King's former friends came forward and gave statements on Twitter. One of them was Slimesicle, a former Lunch Club member. He wrote, Recently, two former Lunch Club members publicly alleged that Carson had been engaged in illegal activity with minors. To be clear, targeting a minor for and other inappropriate or unwanted yeah. sexual advances is illegal and particularly disgusting if the person doing it is a YouTuber who has taken advantage of their fame to exploit young fans. My heart goes out to all those who have been victims. I am sorry you went through that and encourage you to tell someone about it and get the help you need. In an early 2020 phone call, Carson told all the Lunch Club members and our group manager that he exchanged nudes with an unnamed girl he believed to be 17. Because I suspected a crime had been committed, I immediately reported this information to federal no, law enforcement, bad. federal ties to Carson, and drop or a goodbye video, I refused these because I no longer wanted to be associated with Carson or Lunch Club. For all those asking why I did not speak publicly about these issues at the time, this is not drama, this is an alleged federal felony involving a child. As soon as I knew about this, I took every step to protect the unnamed victim and report the information I had to authorities. A crime should be treated as a crime. If you or any loved one is ever in a similar situation, I strongly encourage you to take similar actions and report it to the relevant authorities. No person should ever have to be the victim of something like this. Another former Lunch Club member, C Scoop, wrote this. I said my piece about the Carson situation yesterday under the pretense that it would be used in King's video, but it wasn't. I didn't feel well enough mentally at the time to be interviewed. Thank you, Noah and Travis, for going on. Carson told me what he told Travis a few minutes before. I cut ties shortly after. My heart goes out to anyone affected by the actions of Carson. Shit is beyond... And well, the nail in the coffin was when it's Joko posted a video on Twitter showing Carson admitting to the allegations on Discord. I'm not into kids, but I did trade nudes with people under the age of 18, which is very bad. I was 19. That's you all you need right there. That's Carson's off. profile. There you go. There's all the stuff for that. And then if you go down to the very bottom, Carson's situation, this tweet, he says, this shit is absolutely disgusting. I figure you guys will be seeing this sooner or later. But yeah, absolutely gross messages confirming that this is true. God damn. Holy shit. Everything was pretty much confirmed and there was no doubt about what happened. Many YouTubers then defended King as they felt the age gaps were uncritical, including no pun intended, moist critical. In every state in America, 19 and 17 isn't illegal. Hey, zero. It's only illegal on Twitter. What is illegal is the nudes. It's, like I said, child porn. I will agree with Penguin Zero on that part. A 19 and 17 year old is not. The waters became muddied further when Carson's best friend Schlatt mentioned Carson said he was going to stop sending inappropriate messages to minors and get help, but never did. A few weeks ago, I started having some conversations with some of Carson's closest friends, including his former roommates. And in my discussions with them, I heard some things that suggested that Carson wasn't improving uh, in the areas that he should have been. Uh, and he was showing signs of continuing some of his inappropriate behavior. And apparently this was happening while I was spending all this time trying to help him. And while he was saying that he was working on himself and that he was changing and that he, he hates the person he used to be. Damn. These conversations were really the ones that got me second guessing how genuine Carson had been to me and to others throughout this whole thing. Essentially, King took advantage of their support, which was a betrayal of their trust. On top of that, Carson unfairly used his position of power as a creator to get what he wanted from his underage fans. As a result of all the drama, Carson disappeared from the internet entirely. He stopped uploading to YouTube and streaming on Twitch. In addition, he barely wrote tweets and deleted them when he did. In April 2021, when Ludwig was doing a subathon, he played a Jeopardy video Carson was in. Ludwig then stated Carson texted him to let him know what was playing. Say, you want to know who told me that the Carson video is playing? Carson. <laughs> Send me a text. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, I'll, I'll turn that off. Good call, Carson. This was one of the first times Carson came out of hiding. In August 2021, King gained widespread attention when he randomly appeared on this kid's stream. I didn't even know you were coming here. I'm just like, you know what? I'm just gonna play jump ticket. Why I literally told you. Oh, okay. yeah, five in the morning. Flush. He's like, yo, by the way, he's coming over. I'm like, that's fine with me. This does kind of fit me, actually. That is an awesome collection. Oh, fine. Right, go. That was good. This is just a dot TV shirt. I right, love okay. this collection. Uh, I'm gonna yeah. before people die. Um, but yeah. Thanks for the shirt, or whatever. Thank you, for viewers like you. Um, Chat.
I don't have fans over often, okay? It's it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Also, people are going to put this on YouTube or something, so I'm sure you will, too. Uh, I'll be back soon, like, real soon. Later. The kid, as the kids call him, later mentioned, sorry, no one calls him that. I just made that up, and I don't know why. I guess I just want attention. Wait a minute, this isn't my therapy appointment. Anyways, Miss Kip later mentioned Carson was only at his house for 30 minutes and was there to do charity work with Maya. Carson? Dude, okay. Carson was here for 30 minutes. He's gone. He came over for one thing and one thing only. Not me, okay? Don't think I invited him here and was like, dude, let's do this. He came over for one reason. It's to, uh, he wants to do a thing of charity with Maya. This kid then said he regretted having him on stream, even though he didn't think he was a choma. Call me Carson was there? Dude, I'll say it. I'll say it. That was one of my biggest regrets. It was one of my biggest regrets. Dude, I'll, I'll say it. I don't regret anything. It was my biggest regret. Yeah, I said it. I said it. It was my biggest regret. Well, I don't know why. Because I don't think he's a slightest, right? Anyone who thinks that should shut the fuck up. Why I regret it is because afterwards I learned things that I didn't know beforehand. And I, cause I don't follow YouTube people. I don't give a f about YouTube people. I, I don't give a shit about it at all. Right? I'm respectful and, of them, um, for sure. Pe some friends of mine who know the situation, actually know the situation, talk to me about it. And they're like, dude, this is the real reason why we're like upset or whatever. And I didn't know that. I felt really bad afterwards. I'm like, I feel like a piece of shit. Man. On August 25th, 2021, Carson returned to YouTube and uploaded a video called Moving Forward. In it, he said he wasn't seeking forgiveness or explaining his truth. Hey guys, it's been a while. This isn't going to be your average YouTuber apology video, and I'm not going to make it long and drawn out. I've learned a lot this past year. I understand. I'm not seeking forgiveness, nor am I looking to make excuses. I'm sure some of you are expecting some long, drawn out video explaining my truth of the situation, uh, but I have no intentions of doing that. In addition, he mentioned he would return to streaming in September and was going to donate all his revenue to charity for the rest of 2021. So the next year, I plan to donate 100% of my profits to charity, with a different charity being the focus each month. Now, before you start thinking of this as an excuse to sweep things under the rug, that's not what this is. I'm doing this because I want to turn a negative situation with a lot of eyes on it uh, into something positive that can help a lot of people. I'm going to officially come back to streaming on September 1st at twitch.tv slash live, and I'll go into a little bit more detail about how this year's charity will work. While some hailed this move as a positive change and applauded him, others felt he was using it as a distraction or bribe to escape the pressure. Notably, Carson never apologized or addressed the situation directly in the video. Viewers were split about the decision, with some saying the title was moving forward, so that's what he was doing. Carson returned to streaming, but his reception was very underwhelming, to say the least. He went from a peak of around 40,000 live viewers per stream in April 2020 to averaging between 500 and 1,000 in November and December. On a positive note, though, he seems to be enjoying himself and having fun. It's evident from the drop in viewers that the situation impacted him to at least some degree. You see, the Minecraft community is no stranger to pedo allegations, and most fans are young kids. I imagine that yeah, finding out I, that Carson acted inappropriately with underage impressionable girls was disappointing. Although the girls uh, were close in age to Carson, it's still a sensitive uh, issue and I can see why some fans moved on from him. I mean, Minecraft has a multitude of top creators like George Not Found, Connor East Pants, and Dan TDM to name a few. With so many options, it makes sense why viewers would just pick someone else who doesn't exploit their fans. In addition, Carson's absence from content creation for months on end also hurt him dramatically. Oh. Minecrafters in particular tend to upload frequently, so not doing so only made things worse. Remember, on the internet, month-long breaks are like years. Now the question remains, will Carson ever be able to return to full force, aka the way he was before? Many creators seem to think the answer is yes, considering he is a very entertaining and funny person. They believe his fans will eventually forgive him. For example, Ludwig even mentioned he thought his return was inevitable. But I think Carson's gonna come back. It's, it's an inevitability. I, I agree with Ludwig on I that part. He's gonna, he, if he wants to come back, he can just come back. However, another issue is that Carson lied to his friends and destroyed their trust. And while repairing oh, those relationships may not be possible, shit. Ludwig commented that three of Carson's friends left Carson because he was a terrible friend. Because I feel like everyone on live stream fail community thinks that all of Carson's friends are fake and abandon him because of pressure from Twitter, when the friends that abandon him are the three people who hate Twitter the most. Connor eats pants, who does nothing but talk shit on Minecrafters and hates being associated with them. Schlatt, who's also hated by all of Twitter, and Josh, who does nothing but talk about the dangers of parasocial relationships with social media. The people who could not care God less damn. about the, the thoughts of people on Twitter.
And the only reason that they uh, they they left Carson was because he was just a, a terrible friend. He just lied to him. But I, I feel like that gets lost, and then there's weird misinformation constantly. It's weird. Ultimately, King inappropriately used power dynamics to sex underage girls and then lied to his friends about changing his behavior. I think King definitely needs therapy and would be uh. best served avoiding relationships with fans of any age. He has returned to streaming, but his viewership is only a fraction of what it was before. Only time will tell if Carson can make a comeback or if he damaged his career beyond repair. Personally, I think he won't be able to return to his full potential unless his audience sees he made big changes. And being silent or not explaining exactly what he did or plans to do is not going to accomplish that. That's just my opinion, though, and I could be wrong. What do you think? That's Thanks okay. so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please consider giving me a like and subscribing to my channel. Oh, and feel free to follow me on Wow. I, I will admit, that story is a little more tragic than I expected, but okay. I'll accept it. So, what do I think of this, me? I have to admit, that story was pretty intense and other stuff, and yeah. Like, I've never seen anything like that story. Um, Considering he did apologize and said he was moving forward, it's something... I'll give him trust for, like, in my opinion, I'll give him a second chance, like, even though that whole story was bad, I will give him a second chance, though, if I did ever subscribe to him. Other than that, yeah. But thankfully, I don't do nudity stuff or any of that gross stuff at all while I'm on the internet. Like, yeah. Sometimes I do see it a tiny bit on VR chat, and I do my best to, like, look away from it and avoid it and stuff. And yeah, I'm not a big fan of any porn and stuff or anything or I never allow that stuff on my channel. Also, one of the benefits of my channel, and since you guys already know I'm autistic, is I'm more mature and I, I'm i more nicer and yeah. So basically, yeah. But hey, in my opinion, I'll give him a second chance after all that stuff. Just for now, at least until he does something else, I swear. But yeah, other than that, Hope you guys love this video, subscribe for more, and I will see you guys in the next video. So peace out.